Today we're here with Stefano and we're going to talk about he had to raise a few million dollars and then make a quick pivot after getting that funding. Stefano Roddy, he is the founder of Chaberton Energy. They are a solar energy development company. So thanks for being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. So let's talk about this, this cap raise that then needed a quick yeah. shift. Yeah, that was a little bit of a nerve wracking moment in our, in our history. So yeah, a few years ago, we went out to, to raise some capital. We had just started the company and I'd been putting my own savings into the company. And so we, we thought like we, we got to go and, and, and raise some, some funding. I brought Seneca on board, my colleague. And so we went out and then, and then we were, our story for the, for the fundraising is that we had a couple of sites for our projects in Montgomery County, which is where I live. And the county was going through a process uh, of passing a legislation that would allow solar projects into a certain zone of the, into a certain area of the county. And so we thought this is, this is great. We can do more projects here. And then, so we went out to the investors and convinced them that it was a good idea. So we're able to raise, raise some money and start the projects. And then sure enough, like two months into it, after, after we raised the funds, then the, the county voted down the legislative change that they were going to do. And so here we were, I just like sold everything based on, on the, on this county. And so we had to quickly pivot and it was, it was a little bit difficult, but we, but ultimately it was very good because we had to change, change our strategy, look at different counties. And then ultimately it was actually a great success because it allowed us pretty quickly to open up to other areas that we had not considered and that it turned out to be great. So really, really good, really good outcome in the end, but a little nerve wracking in the process. So did you end up going to a, what, a few different counties and getting contracts with them? Yeah. So we still, we got some sites in, in the different counties in Maryland, that's where we're based. And then ultimately we expanded to other states as well. We're now in 11 states and we have some projects in Europe as well. So it was, we were able to, to grow quite a bit, but it, it but it all started from, Hey, we can do things here. We have to go somewhere else. So what is your involvement within the development project look like? Yeah, as a company, we do, we originate sites. So we find land and places where we can do solar projects. We do a lot of community solar. So these are relatively small, mid-sized projects that serve the local communities where you, you have subscribers in the, in the local community. And then we do all the permitting. We do the interconnection process with the utilities. We do the design, the engineering, the financing, everything from project inception. So we start from scratch effectively to the point where actually can build, can build the project. And usually these projects are multi-million dollar projects. So they take a, they take a, a couple of years to, to go through development. So community solar, is that, does that mean coming into like an area where there's a lot of homes and you're trying to provide power to the whole community? Yeah, although the, the the community solar projects, every state is a little bit different, but generally the community solar projects can be away from the from the home, so they don't they don't the project itself doesn't need to be exactly where the homes are. But yeah, it would be generally in proximity or in the general area of some of a region where there's their subscribers, and then those subscribers can subscribe to an offsite location. So it's particularly good for for people who do not have suitable roof to do solar. They don't, they do not have a way to benefit from solar energy. It's always been, it's, it's a little bit of a way to democratize solar energy. So it's not just for, so solar energy is not just for people who have, who have available roofs and maybe the capital up front, but this can be done with anybody. And a lot of times we subscribe low to moderate income subscribers, whether because that's part of the state program that in a particular state or because it's our choice, it's, it's actually a really good thing. So there's currently a lot of political alignment with your industry. Do you see that continuing? You see a lot of growth over the next few years? Yeah, we see a lot of growth. I mean, it's not, it, it's not always easy and it's not always smooth, but yes, definitely there's a, there's a lot of alignment depending every state is a little bit different. Some states are a little bit more bullish on, on community solar, like Maryland certainly has been a great state for us to work with. We do projects in, in Delaware, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, New Mexico, California. Oregon, so we're, we're across the uh, across the spectrum. So generally, there's there's really good momentum. Some some areas are a little bit more more favorable. Some other areas are a little bit more difficult. But definitely, definitely, it's it's a growing it's a growing sector. What would you say are some of the biggest needs or opportunities in your sector right now? Yeah, the, I mean, the biggest opportunity is definitely to the the the, the possibility to develop more projects. So. So, it, so community solar is, is a, within the solar energy space. It's actually in itself. That's a, that's a big opportunity. So for us, 
We've done other types of projects too, and we do also projects for 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 customers. The, the more typical projects, right, where you put maybe a solar installation on a close to a manufacturing facility, and you you support their their energy load that way. So that's a more typical what we call commercial and industrial or CNI. Uh, so we do some of that, but community solar definitely has been has been has been a big opportunity. It's been something. It takes a little. It, it, it takes. It's taken a little bit of time for people to understand exactly what it is. It's not immediate. Like, wait, like you like you asked, right? Wait, are you putting it into uh, where the homes are? Or are you putting it somewhere else? Is it like a utility scale project that's out there that like takes three hundred acres? And it's 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 a little bit. It's not it's not any of those things, but it's a little bit of all of these things. So, but it's actually working out really well because it's it's a way to connect directly with the with the customers it's a way to keep things at a reasonable scale it improves the distributed generation the distributed the distribution system the electrical distribution system in the air so there's a lot of benefits that are not perhaps maybe immediately apparent but over time it's become more and more apparent and so now it's catching on in more and more states you need a certain legislative framework to be able to to do what we do but more and more states are are adopting those leg- legislative framework in, in on both end of the political spectrum. It's not just initially, maybe it was a little bit more of blue states, but now we see more and more like the every state. There's benefits, there's economic development, there, there's re- revitalization opportunities. There's obviously economic benefits to the to the subscribers. So there's a, there's a lot of great things. What was it that inspired you or motivated you to jump into the solar industry and get this business started? Yeah, so I've been I actually studied energy engineering. So I've been I've been in the in the general energy industry for many many years. I'm not so young anymore. I've got <laughs> twenty plus years of experience, right? But but definitely, I mean, when when renewable energy started to to become more more prominent, then clearly it was uh, it's apparent that there is also a broader environmental issue. Then I felt like this is something where this is a place where I can make a difference. I, I I have experience in the business. I love building new things and building something that's useful for people. I love energy because it's such a such a basic fundamental need that powers everything we do, right? And so it's it's not frivolous. It's really fo- foundational for our society. So I like to I like to get involved there. And definitely renewable was quite attractive. You can do good things for the environment, you can do good things for people and you can, and it's, and it's, it's fun. It's actually, now it's very trendy. When I, when I started, it was a little bit less trendy. That it was, it was more like, wait, what are you doing? Energy? That's not so interesting. <laughs> but the last few years it's been, it's, it's, it's becoming more and more trendy, I would say. Well, it has to be nice that now it's trendy. Now that you have an established <laughs> business in it. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. It, we were very lucky. We were very lucky. I mean, in some ways. We hit things at the right time, you know. Notwithstanding the little difficulties there, obviously with the uh, with the with the legislative framework of the county and and the issues that we had at the beginning, and we had some other issues too. Obviously, there's always obstacles, but notwithstanding all of that, we've we've been very lucky to be in a place that's in in an industry that's growing. I, I get to do something that's good, that's that's enjoyable. We got a great team at Shabberton Energy, so I get to work with awesome people. And, and we do good things for people and for the environment. So, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything better. For entrepreneurs who have businesses where they have to raise capital, are, what's your advice on kind of the practices you use to get your business funded? And are you happy you did that? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm happy that we did that. We, we raised ultimately the, the, the investor that we have. We still have the same investor, Greenbacker. It's been an awesome relationship. It's been really good. It was a little bit risky at the beginning, because we didn't we didn't have a lot of track record as a company we didn't know greenbacker and they were also new as well so it was it, it was an interesting double bet we were betting on them and they were betting on us at the same time but it turned out really really great so again like i feel like in some ways maybe maybe we were lucky but at the same time i think i think part of it was also that we found each other i i found like greenbacker to be aligned with the values that we had, we felt the fit. I felt, I felt like these people are really, they, they have the same drive that I have, that the same interest they want to do. They want to good, do good things for the environment, for the, for the economy, and they want to do it profitably too. Obviously they're investors, but at the same time, they have the, the broader, 
the broader picture. So I think that's finding that fit and making sure that you see when you when you when you choose an investor, or the investor chooses you that, that there is that fit. I think that's that's really important. So paying attention to some of the less, I guess, quantitative clues. I'm an engineer, so I, I by training by, by by training, so I like to look at numbers and figure out like Excel spreadsheets and all that. But then ultimately, there's a big human component. If you if you feel like there is that fit, then a lot of the obstacles are going to be you're going to be able to overcome. Because, like I said, I mean, look, we we the whole story was predicated on Montgomery County and on doing projects there, and that didn't materialize. So all the spreadsheets went out the window within the first two months, right? But what stayed was that they had we had developed trust. They 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 felt like we were we were the right team for them, and they stuck with us. We stuck with them. And, and, and really that worked out really well. So Stefano, if our listeners wanted to get in touch with you or your company to learn more about your services, how could they do so? Yes, we have a website, surprise, surprise, <laughs> www.chaberton.com. Pretty easy to get to. And I think all the contact information is there for sure. We're Maryland based. If they want to come and visit us, we have an office in, in Rockville. So, but all the information I think is on the website. We're also on LinkedIn. So they can search us on Chaperton Energy on LinkedIn. You'll be able to find this very quickly. Well, thank you, Stefano, for being on the show. And thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design and Development. Make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.